Welcome back to You Read John at 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student of computer science at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be talking about numbers and the idea that everything can, around us can be represented and understood by use of numbers and patterns in general, even if you're not aware of those patterns and aware of how it can be represented. Rubik's cubes are an example of this. It is a kind of tactile thing. You can put it in your hand. You can spin it around. You can spin the, the different rows around. And yet there is a relationship between how the rows work that can be understood in terms of group theory. Uh, although I don't understand the relationship myself, I have seen it described more than a couple of times. And that is an example of things that, although it doesn't seem like there's a way of describing it using numbers, there absolutely is. And so going back to the now increasingly long list of videos, the things that we've talked about, many of them have had to do with numbers and patterns. Starting with the grades video, for example, how we as a society view what school does ends up being reduced to numbers. Your transcript at the end of the day describes how well you learn things. And whether or not it succeeds at that, the idea that you could kind of boil down to what a school does to the numbers at the bottom of the line to describe how well the students did, or even looking at a company or a government and their budget, seeing at the end of the day, everything that they do, there is a budget for it, and there's a description of the costs and benefits to it that can be written down and noted and compared with each other. Going to the forest versus trees video, you can look and understand things in terms of graph theory and its connection, or the connections and uh, the nodes and so on and so forth. There's a, a you know, very large field of people understanding networks and connections between different parts of networks, high level behaviors and low level behaviors of those networks and all things in between. Looking at the FNORD video, you can oftentimes describe things and define things in terms of their relationships between numbers. As we saw in the truth tables video, we can actually describe logical connectives in terms of each other and more complicated things in terms of those logical connectives. In the dimensional analysis video, we can start to see a clue of how to connect the properties and qualitative descriptions of things by use of and adding number to them to more complicated descriptions of how the universe around us works. By the optimizations problems video, oftentimes you can optim or create an optimal solution numerically. Uh, you can't always do it, but you can uh, use numbers to get a pretty informed view of what the optimal solution for a lot of different problems actually is. Looking at the different approaches video, there are a lot of different ways that you can use numbers. You can use it in terms of the same way Descartes did, and by kind of time, the use of tying uh, algebra and numeric relationships to geometry and geometric relationships. You can view things in terms of other areas of mathematics like topology and group theory. A lot of the times you can, you can express your problem in the language of mathematics and then solve it. And you know, different approaches means that there's a lot of different ways, even within mathematics itself, that you're able to do so. Uh, exponential growth is something that can really only be understood once you have a concept of exponentials and a concept of exponential power. Uh, and the amount of change that can happen with technology and information technology again, is an exponential thing. So unless we have an understanding to model it with some kind of a process that we can describe these changes by, then we have no hope of understanding them. But we do have these understanding. We do have these ideas that can guide our belief and understand how change is coming and what changes are coming. We can look at the statistics of who does and doesn't get through filters, like the Great White Combine video. And we can take a disinterested view of exactly what we're losing and what we're missing when people don't make it through the filters that we've built up in our societies around us. In the patterns video, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 video, we, we can describe different patterns using different approaches, using different kinds of functions that describe the same data and make different predictions from it. Using the Occam's razor video, we can actually describe using numbers, and I didn't really get into it in that video, but using numerical approaches, we can describe the complexity inherent in certain things, and then use Occam's razor on them based on that idea. 
we the, the various logical fallacies that we've described, a lot of them can be applied to numerical arguments. Uh, maybe not all of them, but a significant number of them. Uh, we can start to bring numbers into the arguments themselves. And as long as we continue to reason correctly with them, as long as we're willing to use all the data and not be subject to the Texas sharpshooter or premature generalization fallacies, we, we can be able to deduce things from them. As described in the NAND video, once we have a, some basic ideas of how logical relationships work, we can describe more complicated things like Turing machines, going to the Turing video, which then can allow us to describe any physical process as long as we're willing to kind of sort through and do the work to do so. Although there may be complexity reasons why we're unable to do so, again, going back to the Hawkins Razor video. It's, you know, we, we can describe numbers recursively, and we can come up with recursive programs to describe numbers and come up with numbers. So the circular reasoning and recursion isn't necessarily a problem for us, as long as we're willing to work with it. Analogy, back, going back to the analogy video, as described in the 10 Ideas 50 Years video, there are a lot of ways to formalize analogy itself, so that as long as we're willing to make sure that what is true in one area is also true in the other area, and be very strict about it, we can use numbers to reason by analogy itself. We can kind of view numbers in, and, and use numbers to sort out issues about the argument of, from the beard. And we can use the number line itself to guide us in making those arbitrary decisions that we would have had problems with kind of clarifying uh, in terms of that video. Uh, it's we, we can use numbers to describe uh, universal quantifier relationships and, as per that video, and the existential quantifier as per that video, and describe all things that are part of a collection, or all things that are part of a set, or all things, or some things, or one thing, and the relationships between quantity, the relationships between properties, whether or not they apply to a whole group or not. We can describe the emotion itself, not necessarily directly through numbers, but we can start to learn things about it by paying attention and doing experiments and kind of finding out relationships between what we experience as emotion and physiological changes that are associated with them, how we act when we're under the influence of them, how we perceive things when we're under the influence by them. All of these things can be measured, all of these things can be looked at and approached from different ways, from different kinds of experiments, to get different kinds of data, different numbers from them that describe and can be used to predict things about those emotions. We can look at multiple choice tests and how clear it is that we should answer the correct answer when we are presented with one and that we should read the question to make sure that the number that we provide to someone is the correct number when asked in a test or a midterm. We can see slopes and the relationship between uh, changing numbers and changing uh, functions uh, as per the slippery slope and the derivative video. We, we can kind of view things in terms of change in causality as per the post hoc proctor hoc video. We can describe causality and the relationship between causality and correlation, again, in terms of numbers. We can view the is-ought problem, again, in terms of numbers. We can describe what is in terms of numbers, but coming to what ought uh, has to be done in a kind of different way. We can describe the Bayes rule, going back to the Thomas Bayes video. Uh, again, that is going, you're going to need numbers in order to predict things using it. Artificial intelligence and epistemology uh, is another thing that is going to be entirely built with numbers. Descartes himself is, is built most of his thought on the premise that you can understand the world through mathematical relationships and numbers in general. Uh, George Polya is another example of, of a lot of different things that you can use uh, your, your math, your knowledge of how numbers work to understand problems that you don't know the answer to yet. The Lady, the Lady Ada video is another kind of way of looking at what is important about the world to find. You can generate poetry, you can generate music, you can generate all sorts of things that human beings have historically thought were a part of our creative aspect of ourselves. 
again using number alone. And the, the rates of change, all of those things that the philosophers for thousands of years, as described in the calculus video, have thought was impossible to know in advance, again are knowable through numbers and through mathematics, which we know today. So hopefully this gives you a clue of how powerful this idea is, that you should be looking for the mathematical relations that govern what it is the world around you. Hopefully you're looking now. Hopefully you enjoy this video, and we'll see you next video.